The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the desert for 40 days to be tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and when they were over, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live on bread alone. Then he took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a single instant. The devil said to him, I shall give you, I shall give to you all this power and glory, for it has been handed over to me, and I may give it to whomever I wish. All this will be yours if you worship me. Jesus said to him in reply, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. Then he led him to Jerusalem, made him stand on the parapet of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and with their hands they will support you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him in reply, It also says, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every temptation, he departed from him for a time. The Gospel of the Lord. Let's ask ourselves a tough question today. Am I a better Christian now than I was a year ago? Am I holier? Am I more like Christ? Am I really becoming the saint that God created me to be? It's uncomfortable to ask questions like that, and that's good. Lent is a time for us to feel uncomfortable. Jesus loves us too much to let us be lazy. He is like a good coach, always encouraging us to grow, to improve. Unfortunately, many of us aren't growing as quickly or as constantly as we should. Professionally, maybe we're moving up. Academically, athletically, we might be making progress. But as Christians, not really. Many of us are still stuck where we have always been, on a plateau. The same temptations, the same falls, the same sins, and we're still mediocre Christians. One of the reasons for this is that we don't go to the real roots of our selfishness. We try to follow Christ more faithfully, but we don't do so intelligently. We keep trying to cut off the branches of impatience or greed or lust or dishonesty, but the roots are still intact, so the branches just keep growing back. In Christ's temptation in the desert, the devil makes the mistake of exposing the three roots of all our sins. In each one of us, one of these roots is bigger and stronger than the others, though we have all three. If we can identify which is our main root sin, we can direct our spiritual work more intelligently and really start making progress as Christians. One way of understanding the three root sins is by asking the question, where am I looking for fulfillment? The gospel tells us that we should be looking for it in our friendship with Christ, in being faithful to God's will in our lives, because we were made to find lasting happiness in him. But ever since original sin, we have a tendency to look for it in three other places, three idols. These are the three temptations the devil throws at Jesus. First, we can look for it in pleasure and comfort, command this stone to become bread. This is the idol of sensuality. Life's pleasures and comforts are good things. God created them 
but they don't last, they don't satisfy the heart. This is why there are more suicides among the rich than there are among the poor. As Jesus said, we do not live on bread alone. Second, we can look for our fulfillment in power, in being able to do whatever we want without limitations, or in making others do whatever we want. This is the idol of arrogance, diabolical pride. This is the devil's second temptation. I shall give to you all this power and glory, but it is a lie. Only God is self-sufficient. Self the rest of us depend on him. When we reject that dependence, we end up becoming slaves of selfishness, worshipers of the devil. This is what happened to Darth Vader in the Star Wars movies. He wanted control over life and death, and he ended up becoming the slave of evil. And so Jesus answers, you shall worship the Lord your God and him alone shall you serve. And third, we can look for our fulfillment in popularity or praise. This is the idol of vanity. And so the third temptation, a miraculous swan dive off the temple roof that would impress everyone and win Jesus' instant fame. But people's opinions are fickle. Fashions change all the time, whereas God's friendship is firm and dependable. Risking that friendship for the sake of passing popularity is bad business. And so Jesus says, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Sensuality, arrogance, and vanity, seeking fulfillment in pleasure, power, or popularity, these are the three root sins which Jesus unmasks. Which one of the three is most influential in your life? It's important to discover our root sin. Each of us should know where we are most vulnerable to temptation. Otherwise, the devil can blindside us. One of the most effective ways to advance on the path of this self-knowledge is by going to confession regularly. Frequent regular confession forces us to take stock of our sins and failings, to look honestly at all the manifestations of our selfishness, not just the big ones. And together with the guidance of the confessor, this self-examination gradually allows you to get at the roots of what is holding you back. The recent popes have all gone to confession every week. Teresa of Calcutta did as well. It's like going, excuse me, it's like a good football coach. The Monday after every game, he sits down with the other coaches and the team and they watch the films from the game. They analyze where they were vulnerable and where they were strong. Then they're able to make adjustments to improve, to become the best they can be. Confession every couple of weeks or so is like that. The only difference is that the stakes are much higher and the coach of our spiritual lives can fix our past mistakes as well as give us strength to avoid future ones. Do we really want to grow in our Christian lives to become better followers of Jesus Christ, better witnesses of his kingdom, wiser parents, more courageous professionals, more loving spouses and friends? To do so, we must discover our root sin and constantly hack away at it. And there's no better way to do that than by making the commitment to come regularly to confession. If you don't believe me during this Mass, ask Jesus and see what he says.